What's up guys? This is the Board Game Rower and I am here with a playthrough of a classic. That's right, this is Firefly the game. Uh, I am going to be using the core game, obviously. Uh, and then I am going to be using uh, the two expansions, uh, Caladesa and the Blue Sun expansion, both. Um, so, of course, Firefly, amazing, 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 amazing game. Uh, definitely one you need to check out if you have not already checked it out. Um, so definitely do that. Um, I want to cover a couple of things first before we get started. I'll let you know what we're doing. Um, as far as the mission and kind of what what our goal is uh, I am playing like I said with the two expansions I'm also playing uh, with the artful dodger uh, ship I'm playing with crime and punishment and um, I'm playing the break the breaking atmo cards and um, also playing with the pirates and bounty hunters expansion Just looking through here to make sure I've got everything covered so a lot of stuff going on here so what i want to do i think first is for all of you guys that have never played this uh, or are unfamiliar with it i want to kind of give you a quick rundown of what's happening and kind of what's going to be going on on the board at a high level and then of course <coughs> excuse me as we play i'll explain you know what i'm doing uh like normal um so the first thing is we get a little bit of that glare off then so what's going to happen is this is our ship right here I tried to pick a color that was pretty pretty um, bright so we have our ship and then we have the Alliance cruiser which is right here uh, in the center um, I believe it starts in Londinium. Then over here we have Reavers, and those those are bad. So we're going to take turns, a turn, and our turn consists of one of four actions. We're going to take, or sorry, it's in a solo play, which is what we're going to do. We actually get to do each action once. But we're going to take that turn and use our four actions to do a number of things. We can get jobs that we attempt to complete by taking cargo from one place to another, maybe illegal goods from one place to another, um, doing misbehaved cards one place to another, uh, flying around the verse and basically trying to take out, um, complete these cards, right? So these cards are going to do a few things for us. They're going to give us reputation uh, with the different people that we have and there's oh let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine nine um sets of people we can have reputation with and if we if we get in uh, solid with these contacts then we can we can potentially sell goods and service uh goods like cargo legal or illegal contraband fugitives or passengers and make some money that way when we complete these jobs we're going to get paid for it some jobs get bonuses some don't uh, we have crew that we've hired and I've already hired my initial crew um, and these crew we're going to go on these missions with us and as we progress through the mission if it's, it requires a misbehaved card or cards then they're gonna help us complete those cards um, and we're gonna get money and we're gonna go across the verse there's basically three different types of locations in the verse um, you can sort of tell I know it's kind of hard with the color but right here in the blue that's what we call Alliance space so there's a deck we'll draw from and this deck uh, if we full burn which means we can try to move our maximum movement uh, of our main drive which currently is six then when we move from a location into a location wherever that location's at we draw a card so 
If I move into anything, it's a blue. That's a light space. If I move into anything that's this yellow color, that's border space. And on the extreme edges in these sides, right, that is rim space. And so as we're going to basically be moving from place to place, trying to complete uh, our missions, possibly working, getting new missions, and then working to complete a mission that we're on. Um, so you've got locations where you can pick those up. You've got Badger, Patience, Amundul, et cetera, et cetera. There's nine of those places that we can go to. Uh, in addition to that, there are locations such as the Space Bazaar, which is actually one location that I'm at right now. I think that's where I'm going to start. Regina, Meridian, um, Persephone, um, Beaumont, right? There's, there's, there's uh, Higgins. No, that's not a good example. Silverhold. So there's these different locations, okay? that you can go to and when you go to those locations that's where you uh, pick up the contacts but there are locations um, like the ones that I just mentioned Space Bazaar, Osiris Shipworks, Regina, Silverhold, Persephone, Meridian these are uh, Beaumont these are locations that you go and you can actually purchase goods and by goods I mean people or equipment okay uh, and that's a separate that's a separate action so let's talk real quick about actions there are four actions that you can do okay uh, and the four actions are make sure I'm, I'm making sure I get these right you can fly so if I fly I got, got two options okay I can mosey which means I just move one space I don't draw a card that's it or I can do a full burn so on down here I know it's hard to see but down here I've got you start in this case we're starting with six fuel so I can spin one of these fuel tokens and I can move up to six um, spaces but as I talked about earlier the navigation decks the line space rim space border space as I move I've got to draw a card and it's going to tell me to keep flying or something's going to happen. Maybe my ship starts to break down or I've got to pass some sort of test to continue on. All right, so that's one action. And, and again, in a normal game, you take two actions and then go to the next person in a solo play, which is what we're doing with this particular card. I get to take each action once before it's the end of my um, round or turn. The second action is buy. So if I'm at a location like Silverhold or the Space Bazaar, I can take the buy action. I consider three and take, uh, I consider three and I can buy up to two. So what that means is um, as part of the setup, I've revealed some cards and there's a, there's a million cards in this game. So if you don't like, like cards, then <laughs> yeah, this game. Let's see. Let me see if I can show you these cards. Hold on a second. Oh, well. That's a really bad... Uh, that's even worse. So anyway, over here to the side, uh, there's, a, there's a bajillion cards. I'll, maybe I'll take a picture and put it on the screen or something. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I pull from that deck. I can either take what I've seen, so as when we draw cards and look at them, anything we don't take goes back in a face-up pile so we know what's there, or we can draw additional cards from the deck and consider those. But any combination of what's face-up or the draw from the deck, up to three, you can consider those, which means you look at those, and then you can buy up to two of those. Okay, So that's the buy. Deal. Uh, that is the contacts. So if I'm at a location like, for instance, um, what's a good example? Badger up here. I can deal with Badger. I'm going to draw some cards. I'm going to consider some jobs. Now, the thing is with your jobs, you can never have more than three active and you can never have more than three in your hand that are not active. Okay. So you do have, there is a maximum. You can't just pick a bunch of jobs. Um, 
you have crew that you can purchase each ship has a different number of crew that is their max they have a different number of cargo hold spaces and stashes and slots for uh, ship upgrades if you want to do that um, and I think there may be one ship that's different, but I think all the ships have an active job max of three. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, when I go to um, a location like the Spaces are, I can buy equipment or people. When I go to a contact location like a pier with Badger, which actually happens to also be another location where I can buy stuff, Persephone, then I can uh, consider those cards and then work. So work is, once we have jobs, and we get to a location let's say the lo you know the job is we go to um let's say the job was we go to greenleaf and we load up two passengers and we have to basically ferry them uh to maybe santo over here so when i get to greenleaf i'd fly to greenleaf then i would take the work action to actually load those passengers up as part of the job that i was doing and then i'll fly them and then when eventually when i get to santo i'd use another work action to offload those passengers and get paid. All right, so that's how it works. Um, as we're moving through and we're drawing cards for the, the, the space, you'll notice that there's this gray ship here. That's the Alliance Cruiser. There's a Corvette down here that you, I don't know if I can, I can't really show you that well. It's not very, show, very pretty. Is it? Oh, here we go. Let's do that. Yeah, that'll work. It's kind of makes us bright. Huh, cool. So over here, you've got the Space Corvette, right? And it's it's always coming for us. Over here, you've got the Alliance Cruiser, which potentially is also coming for us. And then you have the Reavers over here that are also potentially coming for us. Right, so as we draw cards, there's going to be cards that are going to move this Corvette, this patrol cruiser, and these Reavers around. And there are special events that happen if we run into those uh, cards. Sometimes it's as soon as we run into them. Sometimes it's uh, if we start our um, turn, right, um, in the sector with it. So, for example... Um, this alliance contact, if um, the alliance cruiser moves into our location, um, we have to pay $1,000 per warrant. They all get cleared. Uh, they seize all contraband and fugitives, including what's in our stash. And then depending on if we have any wanted crew, which right now we do not. There's actually a little warrant symbol on them. Right now we do not then uh, we would have to roll for those and then it would basically we'd have to stop um, if there's a reaver which is one of these guys these guys basically a battle ensues and we potentially lose crew as one option or uh, if we have a pilot and a mechanic and a fuel we can evade which means we move uh, one space away from where they're at okay so that's that's the basic kind of core components, things that can go on. Now, as I said, we are playing with the expansions. So what did the expansions add? The expansions added a number of things. Um, they added uh, new locations. So the original game uh, board is probably, it's basically um kind of this much and then there's the two sideboards were added as part of the expansions um so there is there is uh, this is a bigger board and also this is the vinyl board all in one piece the official board that's got everything instead of multiple individual boards which is which is nice it's it's nice to have that not required to play but it definitely helps so let's talk about the blue sun so the blue sun expansion what did it add so the two expansions added rim space originally you only had alliance and border patrol space uh, border space so the blue sun expansion added this piece over here um, you had a new nav deck you have the meridian space which is a new location 
you got new leaders, new contacts. We added a couple of new contacts to deal with. Alert tokens, and we'll talk about those in just a second. Um, so, with the alert tokens, what happens now is originally there was only a single Reaver ship that moved around. Uh, with these, what's going to happen is as they're, they're going to move around, but when they leave a location, they're going to drop one of these tokens. And, and what happens is, is we're flying, if we fly into a location with one of those tokens, whether it's a Reaver token, which is one red one, or a blue one for the Alliance Cruiser, um, then we're going to have to roll and potentially encounter uh, those that cruiser or those um, Alliance Reavers. Uh, sorry, those Reavers. Um, and so that's basically it's just making it more likely that we'll run into them in space. There's three of them, so they're going to continue to kind of move about. Um, and it's going to essentially what it's doing is it's kind of hampering us because if we run into those a lot then it's going to make we're going to try to fly and if we fly and end out here right let's say we flew from somewhere and we ended up right here and like we have to come to a full stop because we ran into something that's basically a wasted turn so we've got to be real careful about that and hope we don't run into those or hopefully have a way to deal with that um so normally when you when you mosey which is where you just do that single move you don't draw a nav card but you still have to do tokens all right so it doesn't matter um you know in this case if i'm here and i mosey into here i don't have to draw from the nav deck but i do potentially run into the alliance cruiser anyway so you do have to uh have to take care of that and consider that at least um uh, let's see here. What else? So that is different. That's the biggest thing that it added. It added some more contacts. Um, I'll talk about Mr. Universe's card if that happens. Um, so one of the other things um, that we've done is um, with this playthrough is we've got story cards and then we've got setup cards. The, modify those story cards i'll talk about those in a second but that was something that was introduced in blue sun so now let's talk about the uh caladicia rim expansion uh that added this piece over here this is uh, additional cards for the rim uh, rim space deck and more tokens more leaders all that sort of thing um so one of the other things that happens now too is on some of the skill tests, so some of the misbehaved cards and things like that that we'll show you as we play the game. Now, they're a little bit harder to complete because they're nested. Um, um, but, uh, but, 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 but. This, the, okay, the other big thing was, and I'm going through the books because I want to make sure that I, I handle everything because I've played this only a couple times. So this is kind of ambitious for me to pick. But the Corvette. So the Corvette is the operative's Corvette. Um, if it ever... Um, you ever land... Uh, when the Corvette ends its movement in a sector with an outlaw ship, immediately resolve the card. So it's got this contact card just like the other two. The law... Uh, Alliance patrol cruisers and the Reaver ships do. All right, and um, and it will make <clears throat> it will also, of course, make you stop just like the other ones do. Um, but it does remove Reaver cutters, which is nice. And if it goes into a sector with these Reaver alert tokens, those get jettisoned; they go away. Which is awesome. Um, <clears throat> they don't drop normally when this, uh, you know, this doesn't drop any, this, uh, this Corvette, unless the, well, sorry, let me rephrase that. This cruiser doesn't drop any of these alert tokens unless the particular mission slash story tells you to. In this case, 
the one we're doing, it will not drop them. The Corvette also does not drop them, generally. Um, so if we uh, have alert tokens and we land in a, in a location with an alert token for the Alliance, um, the Alliance Cruiser and the Corvette are both considered Alliance ships. So what would happen in a normal game is whoever would be to your right would choose whether they move the Cruiser a Corvette or the Alliance Cruiser in. What I'm going to do to be fair in the playthrough is I'm going to try to figure out which one would be the most damaged. I'm going to try to do it fair, so I'm not going to use the movement of the ships to like unblock my way. I'm going to try to be fair about it. So you could pick either one of those and then depending on which one you pick, if the, um, you know, when you come in contact with them, you've got to maintain uh, the normal pace, the normal flow, and resolve one of these contact cards. Okay? Cool. Um, other than that, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Crime and Punishment. Okay, so this is uh, the Breaking Atmo expansion just added some, some cards, uh, some more uh, jobs and such those are pretty pretty uh, standard that's not a big deal but crime and punishment so you can see here we've got wanted cards uh, and there is actually alliance alert cards that are sitting over here to the side and there's an additional bounty deck um, that's over here too alright so what's gonna happen is uh, each time we draw one of these uh, nav cards that has the Alliance Cruiser as the name of the nav card, um, this Alliance Alert goes out and it will be something like, you know, it'll tell you what's going to happen. It's basically going to make things tougher for you uh, to fly through. Maybe it's going to make jobs tougher to complete. It's going to make... Uh, make you maybe less money just you know maybe it's just something that happens immediately but something's gonna happen and those are gonna cycle through the whole game okay um, yeah Now some of the some of the cards uh, keyword is seized. That means if your equipment or crew is done that, it goes away. Normally, if you lose the equipment, it just goes back to its stack at its respective location. Uh, you know, as far as like the Space Bazaar, Persephone, Silverhold, Regina, where you bought it from. But uh, in some cases, it just goes away, like permanently, which really sucks. And finally, 23 minutes, okay. And finally, um, the piracy. So normally this, the uh, Pirates and Bounty Hunters is really, was designed for multiple people playing together to have some direct interaction with each other instead of just doing the jobs and such. But I've put it in here just, just as I wanted you to kind of see everything that's out there. Um, there are some jobs that are piracy jobs, however, if those jobs come up, and that actually happened um, during setup when I was getting everything ready, there's these two jobs came out, and they were both uh, piracy jobs that required you to basically uh, have a fight uh, with another um, ship, right? But we don't have another player, so I'm just going to discard those if those do come up. Um, the bounty cards, that's these here. I did include those. Basically, these are people that if we can get them, um, um, get, either hire them as part of our crew or find them on a planet, we can apprehend them. And then we can basically turn them in for a reward. And these rewards are consider considerable. For instance, this 20 Dalen. Get 2600 for him. Uh, the Grange Brothers 
three thousand. So it's very lucrative, but you got to find them and then you got to take them to a specific location. And this is Athens, Georgia, Aerial White Sun Command Cruiser in the White Sun. So it's it's hard hard to find them sometimes, right? Uh, you know where they're at in their decks, so it, it's gonna well it's gonna be easy for us to find them, but. Depending on the job, it may be out of our way to take them, so we'll have to evaluate whether it's worth it or not. Um, we don't need to worry about any of this stealing. So bounty hunting is that that's what this fugitives are dealing with. Um, let's see here. There's always three face-up cards. Um, Every time the Alliance Cruiser nav card is drawn, update the most wanted list. So every time we draw the Alliance Cruiser, this list is going to change. So it may be that we're on the way to get somebody. We draw that card, the card changes. And now it's almost like kind of a waste. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Looking through here. I'm having to read, kind of go through the individual stuff because, again, I don't want to miss anything. And this is kind of new to me uh, for a lot of these expansions. Um, so if we go to um, a supply planet um, and they're in there, we have to resolve a showdown. And we'll talk about that. If we get to it, basically, we have to fight them and try to beat them into submission. Uh, if we hire them... Um, we can turn them in, but it's going to disgruntle all of our crew. So disgruntling uh, your crew happens in a few different ways. If somebody is moral and you do an immoral job, then they become disgruntled. If they get two disgruntled tokens, then they just leave your crew. Okay. Uh, so if we turn them in, everybody else in the crew gets disgruntled. So that's and the, and and there are there's a way to get rid of that with shore leave but that's burning up your actions and you have to pay them like it's a job so uh, it is going to cost you if you do that and doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, yep 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 um so Yeah, so that's pretty much everything, uh, at least at this top level. So what are we playing? We're playing the normal solo game. Um, it's called, oh, no, it's not called, Awful Only the Big Black. So basically with a setup, um, we get some crew and a little bit of money. And there's three, the normal play is you have three uh one of three goals that you're trying to complete. You can get solid with five contacts, you can make $15,000, or successfully pass 20 misbehaved cards. But I want to do it a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is, and we have 20 turns to do it in. So what I've done is, this is my, well, you can't see it. I've got turn tokens over here, okay? So I've got 20 turns. Uh, but I've increased it to 25, but I'm going to attempt to complete two of these three goals. I'm not going to pick one and go for it. Uh, I'm just going to try to complete two of these three. Okay. So that's called awful only the big black. And I've set that up. I've got my people, I've got my money. I've got all that set up. Um, then the, uh, what I've done is I've done a, a modifier card called awful crowded in my sky. And what that did, essentially, is that added all these tokens. Everywhere there was a planet, you added a token, a Reaver token, and, excuse me, anywhere but Alliance space, an Alliance token in any Alliance space. So, basically, what that's going to do is that's going to make it harder for me to fly around. I'm potentially going to run into the cruisers and whatnot, so it's going to crowd it up. So... You know, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I can complete two, but it, if they give us 20 turns to do one, completing two is going to be probably a really tough task. So I didn't want to do myself like 40 turns because I feel like that would just be way, way over the top. So I just added a few turns to see if I could do 
too. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that's everything. Um, I've only played this a couple times uh, by myself, and these expansions are new to me. I haven't played with them um, yet. I played the original core game a couple times. So I may mess some stuff up, stuff up. So if you do play, let me know, and I'll try to fix it if I can. Uh, otherwise, we'll just continue on. Uh, but uh, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this playthrough. This is, game is available. Uh, you can find it. Some of the content's a little harder to find because this is an older game. Um, but uh, it's a game by Gale Force 9. But it is, it is really, really a good, good, good good game so I highly highly recommend um, that you check it out hopefully this playthrough will give you a good idea um, it is on this case obviously soloable uh, there is some solo content uh, but there's definitely plenty of content for uh, playing with your gaming group so thank you guys for watching thank you guys for subscribing in the next video we will start Firefly the game and I will go over the cards that I've picked for my jobs and such at that point. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I am the Board Game Rumor, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.